In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a crystal structure like you see here using a combination of the Voronoi fracture object, the hide selection command, and the MoGraph selection tools. So let's just go ahead and start in a new scene. I'm going to use a cube as my starting point, and I'm going to add that into a Voronoi fracture object. This is going to create a number of different fragments. Now, I want to adjust the number and shape of these fragments. So I'm going to take my point amount, crank that up to something high, like say 300. And we now see that we get a lot more of these chunks, but I want them to be uh, more linear, longer shard-like structures. So I'm going to take my scale on Y and set that as close to zero as I can manage. And it's going to give me 0.01. So I've got a bunch of points very close together. And you'll notice that because they're all more or less in the same plane, the effect is to create these very long pieces. And now I'm going to add in another distribution source. I'm going to use basically the same settings on this new one. Point amount of 300, scale on Y, I'm going to set it as close to zero as I can manage. And I'm going to shift the position of this up on the Y axis. So it's sort of laying on top right here. And my goal here is to break up the silhouette and the height of this bottom set of chunks. And I can even move these up on the y-axis to just sort of adjust where that borderline occurs. So now I've got these nice long shards, some of them clearly overlapping with others. And yeah, that's a much more interesting shape. Now I want to reveal each of these separately. So I'm going to grab my Voronoi fracture here. And now I want to use my MoGraph selection tool. So I'm going to grab my MoGraph selection tool, and I'm going to change my mode from brush to rectangle. And I'm going to just frame up my different views. And there's all these little orange dots here, and they're located at the center of each of my fragments. I'm going to grab these top dots. Then I'm going to hold down Shift, and in my top view, I'm going to grab basically each of the sides, because I, I don't want to show that my starting object was, in fact, a cube. I want it to seem a little bit more irregular. And now that I've selected all of these MoGraph objects, I can now go to MoGraph Hide Selected. And that's going to add a plane effector, and it's going to hide all of the clones in this MoGraph selection. And as we look at this, we get a much more organic looking group of shapes. And if I want, I can even come in here and uh, take my Voronoi fracture, maybe add a random effector. And with my random effector, I'm not going to really affect uh, position, but I will affect scale on the Y axis. So I can get a big variation in the shards here. And maybe we'll also move them up on the Y axis possibly. And if you only want to scale your pieces up, you can go into your effector settings and set minimum here to zero. So they only get bigger. And as they get bigger, they get moved up. So now I've got all of these sort of shard-like pieces, but I want to get them to fan out. And the easiest way that I've found is to just move them above the floor, add a floor object, and then just use dynamics to fan them out. So I'm going to select both my Voronoi Fracture and my Floor, Simulation, Rigid Body. And now when I press play, if I stop somewhere in the middle here, I've got this really great organic looking crystal growth. And there are some fragments that are sort of flying around, and that's a product of the dynamics. But if I make this editable, I can go in there and clean that up a bit. So there you go. That is really quickly how to make a crystal-like growth. Again, we're just using the Voronoi Fracture. We've got some sources that are very small in scale on the y-axis, and then we use dynamics to spread or fan them out. 